We're going to talk markets uh, after yesterday's sell-off. Joining us right now is Mona Mahajan. She's the senior investment strategist at Edward Jones at the table, no less. This morning. <laughs> Great nice to be to here. You. Um, we, we were on a run, then we were not on a run, then we went on a little one, then we went down. Where, what's, what's really happening here during yeah. this crazy earnings season? You know, it's a great question. And look, we have had a tremendous rally in the first eight months of the year, call it. S&P 500 went almost up in a straight line from March to end of July. Now, we were hit with not one, but two downgrades. Fitch last week, Moody's just a couple of days ago. And yet the market's down about 2 to 3 percent off its high. So everybody is waiting for this notorious pullback, a period of consolidation, some profit taking. But keep in mind, there is a lot of cash on the sidelines. We know about the CD money and on the retail side and institutions have that cash waiting as well, ready to deploy. So uh, what we're seeing is 2024 looks like a decent setup. Not only can we see a Fed on the sidelines potentially moving lower, inflation continuing to moderate, but earnings, we think, improve next year as well. So that's a, a pretty good backdrop, we think, for risk assets. So, OK, so 12 <laughs> months out, though, what do you think the prospect is for a higher market? I mean, it, in a world where some people think we already went parabolic. Yeah. Yeah, look, we think uh, the market is in the beginning stages of a bull market phase. And bull markets tend to last, you know, three to four years on average. Now, that's not to say markets go up in a straight line forever. There are, on average, any normal given year, one to three corrections, five to 10 percent range. We have only seen one about five to seven percent correction during that March financial crisis period. Um, so we do think, you know, look at for some volatility, but use that volatility as an opportunity to, we think, position for, in both equities and bonds, really. But why should the markets have a higher uh, than historic valuation, um, historical average valuation at a time when interest rates are not zero percent? I mean, what is yeah. what is that case? Because everybody mentions this cash on the sideline, but what is going to cause this cash on the sideline to come out and pay, you know, a premium? multiple for the S&P 500 in a time when theoretically we shouldn't have a premium multiple given some of the headwinds. Yeah, look, it's a great point. And of course, we can talk about that magnificent seven versus the rest of the market. And we look at it that way. Magnificent seven, about 28 times next year's earning. If you look at that 493 that's left, about 16 and a half times. So much more reasonable valuations, we think, uh, in the broader market. And so we do think where the opportunity will lie over that next 12 month period is in a broadening out cyclical parts of the market. Um, think about some parts of the bond market, but also think about international as well. So areas that are much more reasonably valued, we think, have that opportunity. Now, don't wholesale sell out of your AI and tech stocks. We think that's at the beginning phase of a long-term market, but fully valued at this point. So if that's fully valued, though, you don't think that there's going to be a rotation out? So we do, I think that there could be. And well, we've started to see it. See right. it. No, I mean, but if you get into a if you get into a rotation situation, the idea of holding the guys that you think are at the beginning of this this thing may actually be the mistake. Well, you know, we think that there probably is going to be some period of consolidation in in those magnificent seven large cap technology broadly, um, you know, natural to take some profits after a nice run. That doesn't mean their run is over. It means that, you know, for now, we could see that market shift to uh, the broader parts of the market, the cyclical parts of the market, where, you know, the economy, uh, lever right. to an economy that's doing well. But longer term, that valuation will catch up to the earnings potential. Right. And we do think Okay, so I always get emails from viewers who say, don't just tell me stocks. I buy mutual funds. I buy ETFs. I buy indexes and things. What would you do in that regard? Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, ETFs are a low cost way to play the market. You know, you can't go out and buy 500 stocks on your own. So we do think there's real value uh, in the ETF space and in some mutual funds that are actively managed. When we think about good opportunities for active management, maybe not large cap te technology or large cap stocks, but small cap stocks, uh, parts of the bond market, really good areas where mutual fund managers can get an advantage. So um, certainly we think there's opportunities there. And we think about bonds, longer duration starting to make a lot of sense here as well.